The obstacle is the way. Part 2 Action What's right is what works. The cucumber is bitter? Then throw it out. There are brambles in the path? Then go around. That's all you need to know. Marcus Aurelius In 1915, deep in the jungles of South America, the rising conflict between two rival American fruit companies came to a head. Each desperately wanted to acquire the same 5,000 acres of valuable land. The issue? Two different locals claimed to own the deed to the plantation. In the no-man's land between Honduras and Guatemala, neither company was able to tell who was the rightful owner so they could buy it from them. How they each responded to this problem was defined by their company's organization and ethos. One company was big and powerful, the other crafty and cunning. The first, one of the most powerful corporations in the United States, United Fruit. The second, a small upstart owned by Samuels Emery. To solve the problem, United Fruit dispatched a team of high-powered lawyers. They set out in search of every file and scrap of paper in the country, ready to pay whatever it cost to win. Money, time, and resources were no object. Zamuri, the tiny, uneducated competitor, was outmatched, right? He couldn't play their game. So he didn't. Flexible, fluid, and defiant, he just met separately with both of the supposed owners and bought the land from each of them. He paid twice, sure, but it was over. The land was his. Forget the rule book, settle the issue. This is pragmatism embodied. Don't worry about the right way, worry about the right way. This is how we get things done. Zamuri always treated obstacles this way. Told he couldn't build a bridge he needed across the Utila River, because government officials had been bribed by competitors to make bridges illegal. Zamuri had his engineers build two long piers instead. and in between which reached out far into the center of the river, they strung a temporary pontoon that could be assembled and deployed to connect them in a matter of hours. Railroads ran down each side of the riverbank, going in opposite direction. When United Fruit complained, Zamuri laughed and replied, Why, that's no bridge. It's just a couple of little old wharfs. Sometimes you do it this way. Sometimes that way. Not deploying the tactics you learned in school but adapting them to fit each and every situation. Any way that works, that's the motto. We spend a lot of time thinking about how things are supposed to be, or what the rules say we should do. Trying to get it all perfect. We tell ourselves that we'll get started once the conditions are right, or once we're sure we can trust this or that. When, really, it'd be better to focus on making do with what we've got. On focusing on results instead of pretty methods. As they say in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, it doesn't matter how you get your opponents to the ground, after all, only that you take them down. What Samuri never lost sight of was the mission, getting bananas across the river. Whether it was a bridge or two piers with a dock in the middle, it didn't matter so long as it got the cargo where it needed to go. When he wanted to plant bananas on a particular plantation, it wasn't important to find the rightful owner of the land, it was to become the rightful owner. You've got your mission, whatever it is. To accomplish it, 
like the rest of us you're in the pinch between the way you wish things were and the way they actually are, which always seem to be a disaster. How far are you willing to go? What are you willing to do about it? Scratch the complaining. No waffling. No submitting to powerlessness or fear. You can't just run home to mommy. How are you going to solve this problem? How are you going to get around the rules that hold you back? Maybe you'll need to be a little more cunning or conniving than feels comfortable. Sometimes that requires ignoring some outdated regulations or asking for forgiveness from management later rather than for permission, which would be denied, right now. But if you've got an important mission, all that matters is that you accomplish it. At 21, Richard Wright was not the world-famous author he would eventually be. But poor and black, he decided he would read and no one could stop him. Did he storm the library and make a scene? No, not in the Jim Crow South he didn't. Instead, he forged a note that said, Dear Madam, will you please let this nigger boy have some books by H. L. Mencken? Because no one would write that about themselves, right? And check them out with a stolen library card, pretending they were for someone else. With the stakes this high, you better be willing to bend the rules or do something desperate or crazy. To thumb your nose at the authorities and say, what? This is not a bridge. I don't know what you're talking about. Or, in some cases, giving the middle finger to the people trying to hold you down and blowing right through their evil, disgusting rules. Pragmatism is not so much realism as flexibility. But so many of us spend so much time looking for the perfect solution that we pass up what's right in front of us. There are a lot of ways to get from point A to point B. It doesn't have to be a straight line. It's just got to get you where you need to go. As Dang Xiaoping once said, I don't care if the cat is black or white, so long as it catches mice. The Stoics had their own reminder, don't go expecting Plato's Republic. Because you're never going to find the kind of perfection. Instead, do the best with what you've got. Not that pragmatism is inherently at odds with idealism or pushing the ball forward. The first iPhone was revolutionary, but it still shipped without a copy and paste feature or a handful of other features Apple would have liked to have included. Steve Jobs, the supposed perfectionist, knew that at some point, you have to compromise. What mattered was that you got it done and it worked. Start thinking like a radical pragmatist, still ambitious, aggressive, and rooted in ideals, but also imminently practical and guided by the possible. Not on everything you would like to have, not on changing the world right at this moment, but ambitious enough to get everything you need. Don't think small, but make the distinction between the critical and the extra. Think progress, not perfection. Under this kind of force, obstacles break apart. They have no choice. Since you're going around them or making them irrelevant, there is nothing for them to resist. <laughs>